French involvement in the region now known as Indochina began in the 1600s when Catholic missionaries arrived in the southern part of present-day Vietnam. Indochina's colonization by France began in the second half of the 1800s. Then in 1893, France established the Indochinese Federation, more commonly known as French Indochina. By the early 20th century, influenced by Western ideologies, many clandestine Vietnamese nationalist groups had emerged, each wanting to end French rule and establish a form of democratic government. These groups also rejected their return to the pre-colonial monarchy. Then, the communist victory in the Russian Civil War had a profound effect on the Vietnamese independence struggle as a number of Vietnamese communist organizations formed, one of which was led by Marxist-Leninist Ho Chi Minh, who would later play the dominant role in Vietnam's independence struggle. During World War II in the Asia-Pacific, Japanese forces occupied Indochina but allowed the French to continue administering the colony. In May 1941, Ho organized the Viet Minh, a communist militia aimed at ending both French and Japanese rule. On August 15, 1945, Japan announced its surrender in World War II, and the Viet Minh quickly seized power in Vietnam, including the colonial capital, Hanoi. Then on September 2, 1945, Ho proclaimed Vietnam's independence as the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, or DRV. However, the Allied powers ignored Vietnam's independence since during the wartime Potsdam Conference, they had decided that France would restore colonial rule in Indochina. But in the meantime that France was yet preparing to return, Vietnam was partitioned into two zones north and south of the 16th parallel, with Chinese nationalist forces occupying the northern zone and British forces administering the southern zone. In the southern zone, the British disbanded the Vietnamese revolutionary government in Saigon and dealt a number of defeats on the Viet Minh. And upon the return of French forces in September 1945, the British ceded administration of the southern zone to the French. British forces then departed from Indochina. In the northern zone, Chinese forces allowed Ho and the DRV to run the government in Hanoi. But the real power was held by the Chinese, who however were well aware of the volatile nature of French-Vietnamese relations. In February 1946, the Chinese nationalists and French authorities signed an agreement, and in June 1946, the Chinese withdrew from Vietnam. In March 1946, France and the DRV signed an agreement wherein Vietnam would be recognized as a free state within the French Union but with French forces occupying northern Vietnam. Presently, French forces arrived in Hanoi and northern Vietnam. In July to August 1946, Ho and French officials held talks regarding Vietnam's future, but both sides were so far apart that nothing pertinent was achieved. Then by September 1946, tensions had risen between French forces and the Viet Minh, which soon led to threats and armed provocations. In November 1946, fighting broke out in Haiphong, with French forces expelling the Viet Minh from the city using naval and ground artillery and air strikes. Then on December 19, 1946, French authorities demanded that the DRV government relinquish control of Hanoi. Fighting then broke out, which led to a two-month-long battle for the capital, with French military superiority forcing the Viet Minh to vacate Hanoi and withdraw to their traditional stronghold in the Viet Bac region in the far north. In October to November 1947, French forces launched major operations in the Viet Bac, but these failed to draw out the Viet Minh, who carried out guerrilla attacks in other areas. The Viet Minh strategy was for French forces to overextend their lines and be worn down in a protracted war of attrition. As well, the Viet Minh took advantage of Vietnam's densely covered jungle mountains, which comprised 40% of Vietnam's territory, a formidable obstacle that French forces were unable to overcome in the war. Throughout the war, while the French controlled the major urban areas, the Viet Minh operated in much of the hinterland regions where they gained influence and support in remote villages and settlements. By 1948, France realized it could not anymore restore colonial rule in Indochina. French authorities opened talks with former Vietnamese Emperor Bao Dai to establish a pro-French Vietnamese state. Negotiations led to the formation in March 1949 of the State of Vietnam, with the stipulation that France would continue to control Vietnam's external security and foreign affairs functions. 
but by 1950, the conflict which had begun as a colonial war for France and an independent struggle for the Viet Minh had turned into a Cold War battleground between the United States and the Soviet Union. This arose because of the communist victory in China in October 1949 and the outbreak of the Korean War in June 1950. In January 1950, China and the Soviet Union recognized the DRV and thereafter began delivering large quantities of military hardware, including artillery and anti-aircraft guns that allowed the Viet Minh to reorganize as a conventional army capable of fielding thousands of soldiers in open combat. In February 1950, the United States recognized the French-backed state of Vietnam. Thereafter, French forces began receiving large quantities of American weapons. Ultimately, the United States would supply 80% of the weapons used by French forces. With the newly arrived modern weapons and now reorganized as a regular army, in September to October 1950, the Viet Minh launched successful offensives in northern Vietnam. At this point, the Viet Minh took the initiative in the war. But in December 1950 and through 1951, French authorities constructed the De Latter Line, an extensive network of defensive fortifications around Hanoi, Haiphong, and the economically important areas around the Red River Delta. In 1951, the Viet Minh, believing that the French military was verging on defeat, launched repeated attacks on the De Latter Line, which were repelled by French artillery, armored, and air counterattacks. Starting in late 1951 and through 1952, French forces launched offensives in the Viet Bac region, which proved inconclusive as the Viet Minh, having suffered repeated setbacks in set piece battles the previous year, refused to be drawn into conventional warfare and had returned to using guerrilla tactics. Fighting also took place in the northwest region around the Black River Valley, where the Viet Minh hoped to lure the French to overextend their lines. Instead, the French returned to the safety of the De Latter Line. By then, French authorities were convinced of the effectiveness of the hedgehog defense in depth strategy that they had used to repel repeated attacks by the Viet Minh in the Battle of Nassan in December 1952. However, their adoption of the hedgehog defense would ultimately decide the outcome of the war. 1953 to January to March 1954 saw French forces launch several offensives that inflicted heavy enemy casualties and captured large amounts of weapons and supplies. However, the Viet Minh refused to be drawn into open battle and used effective guerrilla tactics to force the French to abandon recently captured areas. In November 1953, the French military constructed a hedgehog fortification on the valley floor at Yen Bien Phu, aimed at luring the Viet Minh to attack and be dealt a major defeat as in the Battle of Nassan one year earlier. But the Viet Minh, correctly seeing the vulnerability of the Yen Bien Phu valley floor, positioned hundreds of artillery pieces on the surrounding hills. Fighting began in March 1954, with Viet Minh artillery bombarding French positions. French gunners failed to locate the Viet Minh's securely emplaced and concealed heavy artillery pieces, a crucial factor in the outcome of the battle. Viet Minh infantry units gradually moved closer and finally overcame the last French defenses on May 7, 1954, ending the 57-day siege. On May 8, 1954, one day after the stunning French defeat at Yen Bien Phu, delegates from the major powers, the United States, Soviet Union, Britain, China and France, and the Indochina states, Cambodia, Laos, and the two rival Vietnamese states, the Democratic Republic of Vietnam and State of Vietnam, opened negotiations in Geneva to work out a peace settlement for Indochina. On July 21, 1954, a ceasefire was signed by France and the DRV. Vietnam was partitioned into two zones at the 17th parallel, with the northern zone allocated to the DRV and the southern zone to the state of Vietnam. The 17th parallel, which consisted of a six-mile-long demilitarized zone, was intended to serve as a provisional demarcation line, not as a political or territorial border. French Indochina was dissolved and Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam were granted their independences. The Geneva Accords also called for the holding of general elections for the reunification of Vietnam. Ultimately, however, reunification elections were not held and Vietnam remained partitioned. 
In the aftermath, both the DRV in the north and the state of Vietnam in the south became de facto separate countries, both Cold War client states, with the former backed by the Soviet Union, China and other communist countries, and the latter by the United States and other Western democracies. By the end of the war, the Viet Minh controlled a majority of Vietnam's territory and appeared poised to deal a final defeat on the demoralized French forces. The DRV's agreeing to apparently less favorable terms was brought about by the following factors. 1. Despite their defeat in Dien Bien Phu, French forces were far from being defeated and still held an overwhelming numerical and firepower advantage over the Viet Minh. 2. The Soviet Union and China cautioned the Viet Minh that a continuation of the war might prompt an escalation of U.S. military involvement in Indochina. And 3. The Soviet Union and China, fearing the collapse of France's left-wing Prime Minister Pierre Mendes France and his replacement by a right-wing government that would continue the war pressed Ho to tone down the Viet Minh's insistence of a unified Vietnam under the DRV and agree to a compromise.